in a garden and you're looking up ideas for that shady spot in your yard and you go down the rabbit hole. Have you considered lungwort? Pulmonaria is actually a whole genus of about 20 species of herbaceous and evergreen perennials. Many, many, many hybrids these days. Chances are, if you're going to a garden center to look for it, you'll find the tag just says pulmonaria and you'll never be able to figure out where it actually came from, what it is. They're in the family Boraginaceae, okay, so forget-me-nots, Siberian bugloss or false forget-me-nots, um, heliotropes, borage, to name a few. Big family full of fuzzy leaves, have you noticed? They all seem to have very fuzzy leaves. Lungwort is hardy from zones 3 to 8, but if you are in the lower growing zones, you could kind of mulch it in the cold seasons just to avoid any kind of uh, thaw, freeze stuff. Lungwort is a choice perennial landscape flower for shady, moist areas. Okay? It does okay in part shade, but it really likes shade. If in the past you've been struggling with a north-facing area or just a shady spot that a lot doesn't grow in, you may find success with lungwort. And let me tell you, I have it in my north-facing bed, but it's actually a bed that gets quite a bit of bright indirect light, especially in the morning and the evening. So I was kind of worried at first, but it does very well there. So know that bright indirect light is okay, north facing, uh, east facing, gets that gentle morning light, that's really nice. And if you're ever worried about them not getting quite enough shade, what you can do is try and plant other things to support that notion. So hellbores, for example, are uh, really tall. They have a little more height than a low growing plant like lungwort and they might provide some shade for it in the hotter summer months. Planting it near a deciduous tree is also a good option because it won't have a lot of leaves in the early spring when it likes that gentle softer sunlight and then in the hot summer months when that tree starts developing leaves and providing more shade that's when the lungwort will really want it in those hot hot summer days. Just watch that soil moisture because the tree will steal a lot of that moisture in the soil that the lungwort also wants. You may have to water more. I dug this guy up here this morning, he's already very wilty, but I can guarantee you if I planted it back in the bed, it would bounce back. I dug this up for the purpose of the rhizomous roots here, is a close-up photo of the rhizomous roots. They spread underground via these rhizomous roots, and while a lot of rhizomous plants can be invasive, lungwort is not invasive. It's actually just a moderate spreader. One plant will probably only spread about 18 inches around. It's kind of like a little colony, a little lungwort colony. And it's not hard to get rid of if you ever want to pull it up, like um, Lily of the Valley, for example. Now, because there are so many hybrids, I wouldn't go from seed because you never really know what you're getting and it's not going to be true to form if you try and save the seeds. What I recommend is waiting for late summer, early fall when it's good to do clump division and finding that person that already has a lungwort plant in their garden. And then what they do is they'll dig it up and clump division is really just, you're just gently splitting clumps of roots. The rhizomous roots are tough enough that you can gently break them and they'll be fine. The foliage is like your tried and true buddy that sticks around all season long. They're there for the lows and highs, the thicks and thins. <laughs> Let's zoom in and take a closer look. The leaves are a fuzzy and speckled green. Note the fuzz. Very typical of this family. They're low growing, but a flower stalk can get up to 18 inches high, so there's a little bit of height there. The long, narrow leaves grow in an alternating pattern up the stem. Some cultivars will just be green, but this one is speckled green, and I prefer it. It almost looks like paint spilled on the leaves. <laughs> the name lungwort, pulmonary, if you haven't realized already, uh, means lungs because the leaves are shaped like lungs. More specifically, they're supposed to resemble diseased lungs, the white spots being the diseased areas. And also, Pulmonaria is actually been used for medicinal purposes for ailments of the lungs. Uh, you can find it, I'm sure you could track it down dried as a herb. I believe you can also find it in a lot of herbal smoke blends with uh, other plants like mullein. 
moving into the flowers, which is the reason why I like to grow longwort. Because it's like a gift in early spring, and gosh, when you live in that cold climate, those early flowers are such a treat. The cultivar I have kind of starts out pink and ends up violetish, sort of bluey purple. There are other cultivars that are more pinky white, but this color change from like whitish to pinkish or pinkish to violet is actually a change in cellular pH over time in the season. Each flower is bell shaped or funnel shaped and they have five petals and they bloom in terminal clusters, so these little groups at the very top of the stem only and they fade in a matter of weeks. So, fleeting spring treat. A lot of times I get the question, can I grow this in a pot? Uh, with longwort, you can. I mean, you just have to really watch and make sure that the soil stays nice and moist, but also has good drainage with the pot you choose. Longwort wouldn't be my first personal pick for a container. Uh, if I was looking for shade containers, I'd go like begonias, impacans, coleus, coral bells even, oh, lily of the valley, because then it won't spread. That'd be a good container one as well. I actually have one of those up front right now. But know that it's possible, if that is what your heart desires, you can grow a longwort in a pot. Obviously, it's not going to return the following season if you have it in a pot, but maybe if you grow it indoors. Mm. That's something I have yet to try. I don't know how it would do indoors. Some companion plants for lungwort could be hostas, of course, hostas, 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 all the rage these days. Ferns, I have some ferns with mine. Coral bells is a good one. Hellbores, as I previously mentioned, or some tall ornamental grasses maybe. Something that's gonna give it a little bit of shade. Should you be worried about those blazing hot summer months, depending on where you live? Okay, quick, go find someone with a lungwort plant. Go inspect some gardens in your neighborhood. Go to the north facing beds. See what you can find. Go ring some doorbells. <laughs> Excuse me, I notice you have a lungwort plant growing in your yard. Would you mind in a few months splitting that up and giving me a little piece of it? Hi, I'm Jacqueline. <laughs> Would you do that? Or you can move to Alberta and I'll share my lungwort with you in the fall. I don't mind. I'd do that for you. Thanks for watching Plant Speak. See some other links below in the description for some other shade perennials you might be interested in.